A very good morning. I'm glad you're still here with us on Morning at NTV, wherever you are joining us from. Special thanks to those who've been part of us right from 6.30 when we got underway. Right now, we are into our Kickstarter discussion, and we are going to be looking at the politics in the business owners' concerns. This is in light of what is happening across much of Kampala metropolitan area where uh, businessmen and traders are protesting what they say are unfair implementation and execution mechanisms of the tax collection system by the Uganda Revenue Authority. They also have a range of other issues away from the controversial AFRIS. They speak about the fact that taxes are too many and there seems to be an attempt at every point by the taxman to be able to school a bit of money out of the traders, despite the fact that the economy is not doing pretty well, given the fact that hardships have been recorded, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. To help us navigate this uh, business and economic landscape, I have with me the Honorable MP for Pubulo East, Honorable John Musira joining us this morning. A very warm welcome to the program. Thank you, uh, my younger brother, and uh, good morning to all listeners and viewers of this. We go to talk about this. Karibuni kabisa, tuko hapa. All right, thank you very much. I like that uh, Swahili connection. Sure. That is a challenge to me, but oh. I won't spoil your vibe. <laughs> 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 uh, joining us too is uh, Sarah Birete, seasoned political commentator and executive director at the Center for Constitutional Governance. Many thanks for making it. Thank you, Chris, and uh, good morning, viewers and listeners. Uh, let me straight go into what's happening, the state of the economy. Let me leave the word country yes. out of it for now. Yeah. State of the economy. There has been thoughts, especially by some elements of uh, the population, that parliament is giving everything that is going on within the country a blind eye. It's as if the legislative house is not seeing what's happening. And uh, I don't know how you read into that, but most importantly, we should be able to get the spirit and tone within the precincts mm -hmm. or the corridors of parliament yeah. on what is going on around the country, especially in light of uh, the protest. Counting the cost of uh, no business for two days is a huge one. URA is yet to come up with any figures that should help us understand what we've lost. But some independent data collectors out there, consultancies, should be able to be paid up and they provide this data for us. I hope they do. What's your take on what's happening? Thank you, thank you, my younger brother. <coughs> Very right. Mm. And the citizens looking at the is it the first arm or second arm of government? Let's right. look at it as an arm yes. for now. Uh, because it is the most prolified representation of mm. the people of, of the Uganda. People. Yeah. Uh, for example, I represent about 150,000 people. So, wow. yeah, one, but Bugula there are East. about 70,000 voters, mm -hmm. you see that. So they, they would look to me, uh, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we direct uh, this country, especially in its fiscal and economic policies? Mm -hmm. So, you are right to say that. The parliament should be number one to be looked at. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are other levels of leadership. This one is national. Mm -hmm. Secondly, some of us are victims as well. I do business in Bali. Uh -huh. And all these biting taxes come to us. The other day when my managers told me we are, you had been slapped with 20 million shillings for under declaration, I paid the tax myself. Uh -huh. I mean, my businesses, yes. Right. But we are also victims. As uh -huh. Some of us were, were in the business world. I started business when I was young. Then secondly, when I asked my managers, you know, the supplier, 18 percent mm. VAT. Then we also pay 18 percent, possibly even the mm. <laughs> consumer. Uh, you see, we have been in some circles as well, also questioning: mm. Is it right that we should tax water 18 percent? Those of you who are on uh, national taps, you know, uh, whether the, the the water is there or not, there is a service fee, there is what not. But for the good of the country. For the good of the economy, uh -huh. for the good of running all, everything in an economy to be like you are 
personal household, mm. you go to have taxes. That's right. Yeah, and it's right. Uh, and and uh, let me be clear on this. No yes. one individual has, mm. for example, said we do not want to be taxed. Like exactly. Absolutely exactly. not. That's the discomfort mm. is on the raft of taxes, exactly. but also on the mechanisms for collecting these taxes, mm. especially for the sake of the traders. You so are right. Quickly, uh, uh, very quickly, mm. one, yeah, they are coming to parliament today mm -hmm. with a petition That's or right. something like that. Maybe from here we'll get them around the gate. Mm. Uh, one is an appeal, like you said, are you uh, deaf <laughs> parliament? Mm. Are you sleeping on your job? You know, they are coming. And the reaction they will get from us mm. is what will inform of what, how we respond as parliament. Okay. But the other issue is the tax base. Mm. How many people of the 50 million people in Uganda? Mm. I want to tell you that 70 percent are young people. Are young people. people Honorable, unemployed and whatever. Honorable, that will, be, well, that will form the basis of yes. our... Uh, possible solutions to yes. this dilemma. No, but uh, I needed Allow to say, uh -huh. uh, just a minute. Quickly. Now, 30% remaining, mm. uh, the rest, 10% or more, are above 6 or 7 60. or so. And so, uh, you see, uh, now the burden mm. is about 10 or 15% who must pay tax, mm. you and I. You see? And that is the problem. That's the and problem. I'm also transiting to 60 mm. in a few months and possibly. Mm. So that, 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 that's the trouble. The burden now is on a very narrow scope of the population of Uganda. Mm. Uh, others are in. Uh, Sarah Bidete, the submission, especially regarding the narrow available tax base for the country, is a narrative that will be welcomed by the government hearing uh, Honorable Musira talk uh, the way he has talked, especially on that aspect. Mm. But I know you have something to submit on uh, his uh, perspective, you will do that. But your take as an individual who watches economic activity and the political goings on in the country from a vantage point at the center for constitutional governance, what are we experiencing right now? Well, like you said, there, there are three or four dimensions mm. to the tax hesitance, tax protests in the mm -hmm. country. First of all is the nature of taxes. Because if you tax businesses out of business, what will you tax tomorrow? Because government is taxing business people out of business and there is evidence on table. That's right. The latest data from Uganda Revenue Authority shows a huge decline of the big taxpayers in this country. Mm. People who were in the bracket of 5 billion to 100 billion mm. have declined by 93%. This should concern everyone. The economy is gone. Because now we are, and the only increase is on the smaller taxpayers, young people trying to enter. Mm to enter businesses. Mm. So if you have such a decline of 93% of the big taxpayers, have we seen any efforts to inquire why this is happening? And what are the remedies to that? The second issue you have is overtaxing the, the small tax base available, exactly. especially those in the formal sector. Mm. Now you're looking at the proposal of 58% pay. This is madness. That the government wants to take more than 50% of what people earn. Mm. And to make matters worse, because what is government in the essence of tax debate? Mm. Government should provide essential public goods mm. to the taxpayer. Mm. These include roads, education, health, laws and justice, and security. The main uh, public goods. Do we have roads in this country? We, we are suffering we, with <laughs> pit holes. They are no longer potholes. Mm. We are suffering with the pit holes <laughs> in, 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 the, in the main Kampara metropolitan area. Yes. Mukono Wakso Kampara. And this is a, a place that generates 70% of, of, of our GDP. So what benefit do taxpayers get from government? If you look at our education and health sector, there's nothing really much to write home about. The, the state of public education, 
I see parliament and the gov uh, government executive mainly trying to say they provide free education in this country. I want to state on this show that there is no free country in Uganda. Even free the education. smallest UPE, yeah. there is no free education in this country. Mm -hmm. But you see government, the president, we have free education. What free education when you send 20,000 to a school in, for a year? What can 20,000 do for a year? And then you think you are providing free education. 20,000? Isn't that the budget for primary yeah, schools? 20,000 for a year? And you think you are educating children. In the end, we have one million dropout every year from enrollment. One million children. A lost generation in this country. So what is the benefit of high taxation in this country? If you look at Harris, I mean, really, if you fall sick and you don't have money, you, you are real on your own. Uh -huh. Many people are dying in their houses. So what is the benefit of a taxpayer in this country? I've seen the argument of PSST saying developed countries pay higher tax, yeah, Netherlands pays 40%. Yes, but they have these services. Mm. They pay higher tax. They have good public education. Mm. They have good health care. Mm. They have perfect roads. And good governance. Yes. But you want to tax somebody 58%? Uh, the worst governance, by the way. <laughs> no, 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 but they, they don't have the worst governance, really. The Netherlands, if you look at the latest mm -hmm. governance index, I think they are number three. Done by who? By themselves. You do yours. Mm -hmm. Because what are you going to score? <laughs> are you going to score drama and corruption? <laughs> you, do, you can do yours and we compare. <laughs> yeah, we, we know what we are entertained. But so on a daily what? basis, <laughs> what are you going to score? Are you going to score the endemic corruption? <laughs> are you going to score the fake projects of Uruwa, 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 Pinet? Uruwa, what are you Uruwa, going? Uruwa. What are you going to score? All right, that's uh, very interesting, and of course, it's a reality check of uh, exactly where we are at. But allow me just shift briefly to the honourable uh, MP in light of being a legislator. At the heart of the controversies that we are facing are laws taxation laws that have been rolled out that give mandate to the Uganda Revenue Authority mm -hmm. to collect taxes mm -hmm. as much as it can. Yeah. And you cannot spite them for what they're doing. It's an organization or an authority that is grappling with directives to do mm -hmm. the needful. Mm -hmm. And when it goes out like that, you are mm -hmm. designing these laws. You legislate. Mm -hmm. At the time of legislation, and you're discussing income tax, you're discussing withholding tax, you're discussing a pay, pay as you earn. Yeah. Let me just bring you up to speed with the latest development uh, with regard to pay, especially after it emerged that up to 58% is what some people could be paying. The Ministry of Finance has come out to try to clarify. But the clarification itself is a bit confusing. I don't know whether they should have talked to me in uh, Lunyole because I failed to understand the English. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fail to understand. Maybe and I'm hoping <laughs> you can help me understand this. Mm -hmm. According to the statement uh, by the ministry, VAT and pay are different taxes. Pay is paid on salary and VAT on consumption. Mm -hmm. If an employee buys sugar in a shop, he pays VAT. If the employer who produces sugar gives that employee free sugar and not the employee providing that sugar for himself or herself, he should account for VAT. In fact, a few employees are entitled to such privileges, according to Moses Kagwa, the Acting Director of Economic Affairs at the Minister of Finance. I didn't understand this statement. Right. And I'm hoping you read the, the newspaper mm -hmm. and attempt to understand it in your own yeah, way. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is, if I come to the show every morning and I need coffee, you are the ones to tax that coffee. Mm -hmm. Because apparently it's been bought by somebody. And it's the employee. And they are consuming. Yeah. They've just told the employee in the private sector that we are going to tax you out of your job. Mm -hmm. It means the employer is going to decide, mm -hmm. should I give Chris coffee or not? Because if I give him coffee, I'm going to be required to pay VAT. Exactly. Which ideally has not been the case on that particular mm -hmm. front. Is it going to, if I don't give Chris coffee, mm -hmm. Chris is going to ask, why am I not getting that coffee? Yes then the job becomes a bit unsustainable. There are, th there are people who can tilt their <laughs> decisions based on something as simple as either I have the coffee or not. Exactly. That means people are going to be taxed out of employment. Has the Minister of Finance <coughs> spoken to mm -hmm. Parliament? And if that conversation has happened, mm -hmm. 
How did it sit with you? First, it is very unsettling to all of us, let alone that we are members of parliament. Mm. We are also citizens of this country and we suffer all this. Number two, apart from those who are urbanite, mm. my younger brother, you know, I'm a rural person, a raster man, just earth to earth and ash to ash. Mm. So I do understand the suffering. Eventually, yes. all what you do, all what you craft, mm. goes down to the population. This is why you get uh, tap stands, water tap stands, mm. dry. Mosila can afford paying 6,000 per unit. Mm. Uh, President Museven can afford, but it's the same with the local person who should also pay 6,000. And do you think they can get it per unit of uh, national order? No, no. They can't. So you are very right. Maybe out of austerities, we got also to know mm. that this is how the West treats us. You delve into history, I don't have the time here. Mm. In 1966, in Kuruma and others, mm. it, this is how Waswahili uh, Wanasema Kufinya. Mm. You see, they will squeeze you into the corner that you go for austerities and then later on, certainly, they expect some uprising. That shouldn't be the thinking of Ugandans. True, Va our VAT, comparatively with Kenya, Kenya is 16%. Yeah. You see, we, we are, are, we are 18. 18. 18%. And it rose from some point, which I, can, I can't mm -hmm. now recall. The other issue is, True, can we really, the tax we collect, can we show, like uh, my sister, my mm. younger sister said, so can we be. show evidence? Mm. Maybe she's also an urbanite like me. I mean, like others and not like me. <laughs> Maybe. For Those you, of us who live in sides. the rural areas. And you conveniently swing from one the, side. The, 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 the rural person, a rural Ugandan, mm. the citizen, the, the core of this country, maybe 70, 80 percent would wish to see a good road. Uh. It may not be very good, perfect education. 1997, uh, Universal Primary, UPE, was not out that it should be uh, purpose in quality. Yes, but people are, are you conditioning the population to, yes. act, to, uh, to, you to don't use the word acceptable and there is services. No way. The, even it's if not right. Good. We must strive to get quality. Mm. But are the children there? And comparatively to the last maybe 20, 40, 30 years, uh, how many children are going to school? Mm. You see? That's the most important. Then we turn to quality. And a school facility front, uh, uh, grant. Mm. How many classrooms do we build? How many books? How many teachers do we recruit? I've been I also five, and I understand this, mm -hmm. by the way. The school which I went to in the 70s mm. and the early 80s before I went to secondary, how many schools were there? I was sitting on a stone mm. and no chalk and everything like that. Can a child today do without a chalk? That's the most the, important. The reality is there are yeah, some the, who are doing the, 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 without chalk. I know. And they're still know. sitting on uh, Very blocks. True. Yeah. Uh, look at the population vis-a-vis -vis mm. the, 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 the services. You see? Uh, Museveni came here and got 13.5 million in 1986. Today we are about 50 million. You see? And I want you to now see the growth rate of Ugandans. And also the birth rate and whatever. Okay. So it is true we impact heavily on the services because of the small, very narrow tax base. And certainly you crack. The, 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 the traders crack. I'm one of the traders based in Bali. We crack because we are few. But if we widen the tax base and the more so avoid the direct tax, you see, the, the poll tax, you, you, you grew up, maybe you are too young, uh, you grew up knowing about a graduated tax, yeah. where people would... I saw, I saw uh, my seniors running. Exactly. Yeah. We grew up like that. My but okay. Ran. Anyway. Uh, yeah. A good submission, no doubt. Yes. But uh, you largely yes. sound like a conflicted man, being a politician, mm -hmm. a legislator, and also a businessman. But most important... That is even better. Uh, a person from the rural area, like yes. you speak. Yeah. Sarah, I, I'm sure you... Do you understand his position, or oh, you wouldn't even care? 
<laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I think, uh, honorable, yeah. being a politician, mm. there is a way he must speak, because it is we. Everybody likes an educated population. Yeah. The extrus of population growth for me is neither here nor there because population growth goes with other advantages that's right our gdp has also expanded our tax revenue has expanded our production has expanded so population growth is not an issue to condemn if we were a progressive economy mm -hmm. or a yes. progressive uh, country exactly. the problem is having growth on one side and then stagnation in terms of development as a country for me, that is the problem. Mm. But it, 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 the population growth alone, although it needs to be controlled, I know that now the fertility rate has gone down, 3.35. It needs to be controlled. And at the same time, it's politicians who mislead people, produce, produce, mm. without taking into account the quality <laughs> of, of the population. Yeah. <laughs> when you fail to account for the primary dropouts, and, and we have not reached secondary because there are dropouts at every level. But I'm looking at 100 million, mm -hmm. 1 million children that get lost from enrollment to sitting of PLE every year. Mm -hmm. And government cannot account for these people. What kind of country are we building? Okay. Because the country is about people and borders. Yeah. Our borders are not shifting, we are not worried, we are not under threat. What population are we building for the future? Yeah, the quality of population. Yes. Let, me, let me register your submissions on what could be the solution. There's uh, a reported meeting that will be held on Friday between the traders, for example, and uh, President Yuri Kaguta Museveni. Is the solution a meeting between traders and the president or a reconstruction of the tax regime? Please. Well, if I may go first, really, we, our president micromanages everybody who has a problem, including a border, border strike, whatever, you name any protest that has ever happened in this country. It ends in the state house. But also we have abuse of institutions. And then I want to give an example of the PS trade. Uh -huh. Parliament made a clear resolution after scrutiny of abuse of office for, for the permanent secretary trade. And they recommended that she leaves office. The PSST took the action, because he's a supervisor of accounting officers, took the action of parliament and suspended the, the PS trade. And you saw what happened with the president. Because uh. you are touching my cadres. He's not bothered about abuse of office. He's not bothered about institutions. He did not. He did not even refer his decision back to Parliament, where it originated. Ordered the PSST to reinstate, and now Parliament is dealing with the same accounting officer that they recommended to be fired, and they are here to the stuck. They cannot even do anything. So you have erosion of institutions. Parliament is just one example. Then you have. A micromanager through elaborate patronage. I must be the solution to a very problem. Even personal issues, everybody, you run to the president. I must be the only solver because that's the only way I must sustain political patronage. What do you owe me? I solved your issue yesterday. So this is how the, the regime is sustaining itself in power. But this comes <coughs> with a very high cost. As much as the president derives political gain through this micromanaging, but you erode opportunities for constructive engagement of stakeholders. You erode opportunities for collaboration and sustainable development of a country. You erode the power and efficiency of institutions. And that's where we are. All institutions are just on paper and picture and, and drawing salaries. Honorable, Effectiveness of these yes, institutions. Honorable, I'm, I'm, I know you're eagerly awaiting that petition from the mm -hmm. traders, but yes. uh, in this country, as one who has uh, uh, broadcast for a while, mm -hmm. petitions to parliament are a posturing of the people. You will go to parliament, you will petition a speaker or the deputy will come up and uh, speak about how they're going to engage with whoever you want to engage with and then we shall enter the next cycle of the news process and the nation shall move on until the next trader strike and again yes. we shall play the script back. 
I know who is fooling who, no doubt, as uh, a grown-up individual, but should you allow to be fooled as the parliament? You can fool some people sometimes, mm. but not all the people all the time. Mm. I hope you understand me. I do. The undercurrents after such a thing within the parliament, you can't know what we do down mm. there. Maybe it does not come to the limelight of the fourth estate especially, which is the big eye mm. for the population like you. But I wish also to say this. Are you minding about your country? Patriotically? Do I have another country to run to? Those of us who, in our young age, mm. who became refugees in Kenya, and we saw the torture, we are mindful. And I've told you I sympathize with the traders. Mm. And I've given you reasons as to why all the burden is on a, a small population of about only 10% or so, mm. to be sincere. That's right. To be sincere. Now, the other issue, micromanagement, like my younger sister has said, in a third world, country. in a third world, country after my in a third world, I know just she has up. traveled, trotted around the globe, mm -hmm. and she knows the Western bureaucracies. A Western bureaucracy can run even without a president. That's it. But they put a figurehead. America can run without a president for even 30 years, mm -hmm. but they put a figurehead. It can't be here in a third world mode of economy. It can't work. This is why it's just like even the family is here, the first unit of governance, the family here. Mm -hmm. Will you allocate your first child to manage the issues of the family when mother and the father are there? It is impossible. So you take it you, at that level. Now, too, let me just Can let I me ask just rush into this. On that, you will, you on will that just, point. you will just, <laughs> just put it down. I was listening. I also need to understand something there. <laughs> what? Anyway, yes. please. <laughs> Micromanagement mm. in a developing economy like this one, okay. characteristic of all third world, uh -huh. not even second world, by the way. Like all right, India. let's quickly but submit to the last one. Uh, the last one ally. is about the farmer's house. Mm. Uh, look here. You are plugging a tap where money is going to. You want eight billion in the Empire Building or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now Geraldine, the PS is saying no, that is too much. That's too much. Mm -hmm. Why can't we renovate this farmer's house? It belongs to farmers, nineteen sixty four by the way. That's right. And then you say, uh, -uh you know the PS is bad. After the president learns that kind of thing, that's when it comes. To his wisdom and so 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 was parliament everything. wrong everything why can't we be wrong and who who, <laughs> who, who directs us are you aware Wait a minute. we originate oh, most of these things we can debate them fine but again it is the executive which originate <laughs> All every right. other issue All right. madam sarah okay. i beg that in the future you join politics honorable this mp you know. and yeah, uh please, thank you. and uh, sarah so Geraldine, uh, yeah. no problem that no problem uh, i'm telling How you and the president was right all right yeah that's you need to listen to that, that, that debate will be, you, I, I that debate will be tackled no, on I, any, I, I, any, I'll any other day i'll allow sarah berated to use uh, 60 broadcasting seconds and then uh, we wrap this up because yeah that's that's the rejoinder on the issue of how the honorable explained micromanagement and trying to compare the three arms of government mm. with the family unit and the father and son. Three arms of government have constitutional powers and mandates. Mm. Parliament has its oversight function. Mm. You, so you cannot say that uh, when the parliament does oversight function, the president has the leverage to refuse the decisions of parliament. But he refers Legally. them back. Legally. And he has done that. Sometimes. He refers them back. So why didn't he refer the Geraldine issue back to parliament? He, he right. did not. So that, that, that is the abuse and the erosion of institutions I'm talking about. And, and the weaknesses of institutions are at several levels. I just used that as an example. Mm. Where the constitution says the president can disagree, okay. yeah, but refer back. All right. He did not do that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I said earlier, time is not our ally right now. I should go on the ground and uh, speak to my colleague, uh, Stephen Mbide. Mm -hmm. And uh, before I do that, I should be able to do the wrap up. Uh, many thanks. John Basira, honorable. Uh, thank you too. <laughs> thank you for hosting us. Yeah. Let me go to Stephen Mbide. Of course, it's uh, day two of uh, the strike by the traders. Yeah. And uh, let's have an update on what exactly is happening. A very good morning, Stephen. Thank you.
It's morning, attentively. Good morning to you.